All right, so there's our initial foil step for the first one. I got negative 10 from here. So I'll just erase this here. So when we do root two times negative 10, there's no root part of this and the number part of this is one, right? So we just multiply one and negative 10 and then the root goes on the end. Okay, any other questions for this first step here? Well, let's look and see. So can root six be simplified any further? Okay, root two? Root nine? Okay, so we have to go further with that. Square root of nine is, that's actually a perfect square. So we can just write three. How about root three? Okay, so that will stay. And then we'll just multiply 15 and three there. Should I simplify this to 15? Why not? Yeah. So this would need a root three for me to put those together, right? It doesn't have a root three, so that stays. Is there anything else I can do here or is this finished? Okay, so that's our solution. Do you guys need a couple seconds for number two? Or is everyone finished? Okay, I'm not getting any yeses, so we'll keep going with number two. So who can tell me how they started this one to simplify this? Jose? Um, I started by doing two to start square root of 16 times five divided by four. Mm. And why didn't you choose four times 20? Because four is a perfect square as well. Mina, do you wanna? Right. Yeah. So 20 still has perfect squares inside of it. If you wanted to, you could break this into four times four times five, and then that's 16 times five, right? And then just square root that. So you could do that. Um, but the goal is, is we want this second number here. After we find the perfect square, we want the second number not to have any more perfect squares in it. So that's why we choose 16 and five rather than four and 20 here. Okay, next line, what should the next line look like? as we simplify. Peter? Okay. So we just square root the perfect square part of this. So 16, root 16 becomes four. All right, what did you guys do from here? Is this finished? Is there more simplifying? Jose, what do you think? And what would that look like? So the first time we'll do is one over two. Okay. Okay. So you're sort of splitting this into two different fractions, which like I would like to maybe keep it together as one fraction. So you're not wrong, but the correct way would be to express this as a single fraction. Mina, how did you do that? I didn't do it. Okay. Mm, no, not quite. Peter? So what goes equally into each of these numbers? Two. The proper mathematical way to express this. Also, can I just ask, can I just do this? Okay, so this is what Sidki would call a math crime. Um, we cannot do this, okay? The reason is, and, and I, I heard someone say it, is this is also over four. So if I only cancel it out of one of these two things, I've disregarded the fact that this was also over four. So I'm not allowed to do this. This is not, not okay. Um, I have to take out the same thing from every piece of this. I don't take anything out from underneath the root. This whole thing is four times root five. So I actually am just looking at these numbers here. 
if I want to show this properly mathematically, what we'll do is we'll take out a common factor on the top. So what's common between two and four? Okay, so we'll take it out. What would be left? One minus two root five. And then because this whole thing, I've taken out a two from both of these, I can reduce this. That's okay. If I'm trying to cancel something that's right next to a plus or minus, and I'm only canceling out of one piece, that's not okay. But since this is multiplied, it's part of both of these, right? So I'm taking it out here. So we can reduce the two and the four now, two, one, and two. So we don't need to write a one outside a set of brackets. We can just write it as one minus two root five, all over two. Nathan. That's what we did. So this is like the proper math mathematical way to demonstrate what we're actually doing. But yes, technically we're dividing each little piece there by two. As long as we can do it to each piece, that's fine. Ethan? Well, this doesn't have four inside of it. Whoops. This doesn't have, I can only take out a max of two from that. Right, but we're keeping this in exact values, no decimals. So we're keeping it in fraction and radical form. Okay, some of you guys have calculators that if you enter this in, it will give you exactly this out, which is great. I know your calculator knows how to do it. I wanna know, and I want you to be able to show me how you can do it. So you can use your calculator to check if you have one of those calculators. The other option is to check my answer. If I don't have one of those calculators, I'll check that this decimal is the same as this decimal. It, this is the final answer, yes. Okay. The only thing that decimal check doesn't tell me is if I've, if I've simplified enough. If I happen to have not simplified enough, sometimes the decimals will be the same but there's more simplification that has to happen. So that's a check that you can do. Check the decimals, or if your calculator gives you out roots and radicals and fractions, then you can check it right in your calculator. Nathan? Yep. So I'm gonna tell you like, I will say leave your answer in exact values, meaning like you're leaving it in fraction and radical form. Okay, so a, a big goal of this course, and that that's probably like this is part of the reason why we're learning how to simplify radicals, um, is to learn more exact ways to express our answers. Um, it's also just like some of this is like, again, things that we've all agreed upon in math that we're going to express our answers in like simplest form. Um, and yeah, it helps us not have to round any decimals or anything like that. So this is the exact expression. Okay, so if you kind of followed with this, you can do today's lesson, okay? If you didn't, that's okay, because we're gonna keep practicing it in today's lesson. All right, so here's our objective today. We are going to go over quadratic formula one more time, but this time, we're not going to express the x-intercepts as decimals. We're going to express them exactly. And what I mean by exactly is what I just was discussing with you guys, which is we're going to leave it with ra radicals and fractions as a fully simplified answer. Okay, so no decimals. Exact answers do not have decimals. All right. Okay, so... This is actually similar to a question that we did on the quiz, but you guys did it with decimals and we're gonna do it in exact values. So the first thing I need, if I'm gonna solve this, well, actually the first thing that I should know is what am I finding if it asks me to find the exact solutions of this and it's set equal to zero, what am I finding, Georgia? We're finding the x-intercepts and we can do that in two ways. One way might be to factor. The other way might be, if I can't factor, then I have to use quadratic formula. So can I find any two numbers that multiply to 15 and add to the middle value, negative 10? 15 and negative 10? 
I don't think so. so. <laughs> there you go. So you've seen it lots. So we can't do this one. So we're going to identify A, B, C. This time we're leaving it in exact format though, no decimals. So we're going to input this into quadratic formula. And you guys did this on your quiz, actually. I didn't realize that this was the same as the question that I put on the quiz, but just so happened to be. No, you have to keep the sign with the term, with the number. Oh, yes. Yeah. Sorry. I thought you meant like up here. Like, yeah. So the negative and negative will make a positive. Okay, and then here we get positive 100 minus 60. So we're gonna get 40 there. Yeah. Okay, so this is the grade 10 part, right? We plug it in, we simplify, we get to this point. Usually in grade 10, we'll split it into two options. We'll split it into the plus option, the minus option. We're gonna wait to do that until we've simplified fully here. So now we're gonna pick this up. And do you guys see how similar this looks to the question that we just did up here? Yeah. Looks pretty similar, eh? So same kind of idea. Are there any perfect squares inside of 40? No? But are there any numbers that multiply to 40 that are perfect squares? 20 is a perfect square. Six is not a perfect square. Four and 10, there we go, we got it. Okay, I have to be able to square root it and get a whole number. That's the perfect square part. That's what we're talking about. So we'll split 40 into four times 10. Again, we didn't choose 20 times two um, or eight times five because those things aren't perfect squares. Okay. Let's square root that perfect square part then. We're going to square root four, and that will be two. Like this? No, because this is plus and minus. Well, there's two options, right? One's a plus option, one's the minus option. That's how we get two x enters up. So that's not the not multiplication, right? Okay, let's continue. We're gonna common factor. So what is common that I can take out from two and 10? Okay, so let's take out a two. And what would I be left with in the brackets when I do that? Five plus or minus square root of 10. Don't touch the root. Leave the root once you've simplified it. Okay, so we took out this two and we took out two from here. That's how we're getting five. So there's nothing to common factor on the bottom. The bottom's just like a single term. So we're not like multiplying something new into the top. If we were doing that, then I would multiply it into the bottom. We're just reformatting the top. Yeah, so we're going to cancel two out from each. And because this is a one, I'll just drop the brackets here. So it'll be five. Yeah, now we can split it. Okay, and then we'll split into our two options here. So first X is the plus option. Second X will be the minus option. Yeah, exactly. If you were to put these into your calculator, let's say you calculate this, it should give you the same answers, the same decimals as you would get for those. So that could be a way to maybe check your answer. If you feel confident plugging that whole thing into your calculator, the plus option will give you the same 
decimal as x1, and the minus option will give you the same decimal as x2 if you were to put this into your calculator. Georgia? So we're not going to calculate as a decimal. We're going to leave it as this. Um, that's the final answer. Yeah. So we're, we're basically just expressing these exactly. Does it make a big difference if I do this versus I do these? No, but in math, like just like we've all agreed, we're, we're all going to do three over six and write that as a half. That's the same idea here. It's just the process of simplifying the answer. Uh, Nathan. Uh, well, no, because the grade 11 part of this, I'm going to ask you for the exact solutions. The quiz is fine. I didn't even teach you this yet. Yes, I asked for decimals on the quiz. Ethan? Sure. Yeah, so that's what Georgia just asked me. So this, it's the same. It should be equal. Did you put it into your calculator and try it? <laughs> Where's your calculator? I'll check it. I bet you it's the same. So five plus root 10, divide by three, 2.7207. And then 10 plus root 40, divide by six, 2.707207, it's the same. It's exactly the same. Pardon? OK, well, you'll have to show me how you put it in, because you might be doing, maybe you're entering something wrong. Hermes? <clears throat> so we took out a 2 from this and from this. So when I divide 10 by 2, I get 5. Yeah, we took it out. And that's why we have the two out here, right? So we common factored it up. Yeah. Okay, let's try another one. Nathan, yes. Yep. 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 Put that, split it into the plus and minus and put that as your final. That's a good question. Sometimes guys, at this point, I will be left with a root that can't be simplified. What if I'm left with like root 71? I can't simplify that, right? So I would leave it. I will I'd split it into my plus and minus and that would be the end. So I wouldn't even have to do these extra steps. No. If you, I mean, it could happen and then you would just square root it, but not for exact values, not like if you're expressing an, an answer exactly. Georgia? Mm -hmm. No, because you can't reduce that if there's nothing here to reduce as well. That's the math crime that we talked about. So if you're trying to reduce something and there's a plus or minus right next to it, don't reduce it because that you would have to reduce it from both terms. That's a good question. Okay, let's try another. Okay, so my suggestion here, guys, um, firstly, we need one side of this set equal to zero. Johnny, can you store that away, please? In your backpack. Thanks. Um, we need one side to be equal to zero. I personally, oh no. <laughs> Thanks, Patrick. It's connected to the other room. Okay, so one option is, is we can move the five over, it becomes negative five. I personally, just to make my math a little bit easier along the way, I prefer to make sure that A is positive. So instead of moving the five over, I'm actually gonna move these two over here. That way this becomes positive and it will just make your simplification process a bit easier. That's my personal preference. 
you can still do it the opposite way. You'll get the same answer. You just might have negatives and positives in different spots. So I'm going to do this. Sure. And I'm just gonna make a little note here, try to make a positive if possible. Um, yeah, yeah. We're just trying to find solutions, right? So we're find, trying to find where this is equal to zero. So we'll still get the same answer either way. Okay, so now we have A is two, B is negative eight, and C is five. We're gonna plug into quadratic formula. Okay, so this is our grade 10 part. part. We should be like comfortable-ish with this at this point. This is just a simplifying part. You can just put equals once you've written it once, that's fine. What's underneath the root here? Once we simplify that discriminant part. Sixty-four minus forty, so twenty-four. Good. Okay, can we simplify our root further? Okay, Johnny, what would you split this into? So I want to keep this in exact values, no decimals. Mm, I don't think so. Nathan? Yeah, so we're looking for perfect squares inside of 24. So we'll split that into four times six. Okay, let's square root the perfect square part. Don't split it unless there's a perfect square inside. Okay, these ones are just kind of like they're arranged so that there is a perfect square inside. If there's not, you can actually just take it and write the plus option and the minus option from there. Okay, so we're only splitting this is it if one of these can be a perfect square. So square root the perfect square part. Not yet. We have one, a couple more little steps. We have to common factor. Hermes, what would we get? Great. So we're taking out a two from each of these. We'll be left with four and one. There's like an imaginary one in front here, right? Okay, then we can reduce once we have that common factoring step done. And if this is one, you can just drop the brackets. If it's another number, leave it out there and leave the brackets in. So we'll have four plus or minus root six over two. Then you can split these into your two options. So we'll have the first option and the second option. No, this, I'll ask you for an exact answer. So you'll give me this. Okay, any questions on this one?
Okay, why don't you guys get a head start on the next one? Try the next one, see what you can do with it. Pardon? Yep. I don't think anything multiplies to negative nine and adds to negative four. So you'll have to use quadratic formula. Okay, you can start by setting this equal to zero. That's what we're going to solve for. That's equal to f at x. So we'll set f at x equal to zero and solve. Okay, I'm going to start putting up a couple of steps here. This is your initial substitution step. You can check as you go here. What did you guys split root 52 up into? Okay, so four times 13. So we'll square root that four part underneath the root. The 13 stays under. Someone wanna tell me where they went from here? Georgia? So you said two plus or minus two root 13. Oh, okay, so you're common factoring the two. Gotcha, two bracket two plus or minus root 13. Good, so we common factor and then Nathan. Okay, so reduce. This is a one, so we can actually drop the brackets. We don't need one in front of a set of brackets. That's it. So we'll split our answers into the two options. Hermes. You're good? Okay, any questions on this one? Can I clarify one step to the next? Patrick? So this step to this step? So we're common factoring. So out of four and two, what can I divide evenly out of both of those? Okay, so that's what we took out. And what's four divided by two? And what's two divided by two? And then root 13 is left, right? So that's what we did. We, we just took out two from each of those. Common factored it. Okay, and then we're just reducing here. Two over six, we can reduce to one over three. Yeah. Okay, anything else? Yeah. Nina. Oh, okay. Okay, 